taking foul shots in that kind of environment with that kind of noise. Uh, did it feel different to you in any way, maybe because of the, just the situation that you were in, or did it feel different at all? No, not at all. Uh, I felt like, you know, I'm comfortable at the free throw line. So, you know, uh, I just wanted to make my first one, really. You can make it go to overtime. That's the worst case scenario. Just make the first one, make it go to overtime. But after I made the first one, I knew the second one was going in. I had that much confidence in myself. Quentin, would you take us through the last possession there where you came down court and you drew the foul? And just kind of what was the what was drawn up for that? And, and you know, obviously it looked like you wanted to draw the contact. Yeah, uh, the game plan was, you know, for me to just push down, the, uh, push the ball down the floor and try to get a layup. And if I didn't get a layup, everybody else just crashed and tried to get a put back. So I just went to the hole aggressively and got a foul. Were you surprised you got the call? Uh, I didn't know what was going to happen, honestly. It was a lot of contact, but I got to the free throw line, made both the free throws, and we won. When you hear the whistle and you know you're going to the line, down one, what are you thinking? That's, I feel like that's every kid's dream. You know, Everybody want to be in that situation. You know, On the road, down two, your free throws is the game winners. And, you know, I, don't th I don't think it gets any better than that. What was the uh, team huddle like after they called Trayvon for the foul on the three? Because it looks like with all the crowd noise, I imagine you guys thought you guys got the stop and got the rebound, and then you realize um, that he's going to line for three shots to potentially give him the lead. Yeah, well, first, uh, I don't think anybody even heard the whistle because we kept playing. And then, you know, when we held it up and we realized he was going to shoot free, three free throws, we were just like, you know, we're going to come back down, you know, get a bucket, you know, try to score, either win or get fouled and put this thing in overtime. You know, we wasn't really – we didn't dwell on that, you know, foul by trade. Honestly, I didn't think it was a foul, but, you know, you got to play through it. Quentin, the way Creighton was playing defense, I mean, they they were trying to swarm the bigs and obviously take Trayvon out of the game. It opened some things up for you. Just kind of describe what your mentality was going against this team. Did you know you were going to have some chances to uh, to score today? Uh, well, Coach Max said, you know, before the game, you know, he just wanted the point guards to be aggressive. You know, he knew he knew we kind of knew, you know, in practice that you know they was going double team just because off the game off Butler. You know, I felt like our bigs destroyed Butler's bigs, right. and so we kind of knew. That, you know, they was going to start trapping or like heavy crowd or something. So we, he just told us to be aggressive, you know, play, play off the post feed. Or they kick it out, be ready to shoot or drive the ball. You know, just be aggressive, really. That was the whole mentality. Were you surprised coming off the Butler game that uh, Karen and Sean were able to have the success that they did? No, I see that every day. You know, I, I know what they're capable of. You know, they got high level skill and, you know, they, they got good touch around the rim. So. I have all the confidence in the world when they get the ball down low. I guess just can you describe what that game was like? Like was like? I mean, it, you guys won at Butler. That's not an easy place to win and seeing all. Yeah, I, I felt like today. What, how yeah, how do you weather this thing? Playing at Butler and creating back to back on the road is not easy. I can guarantee you that. You know, uh, when they when they went to overtime at the Butler game, you heard every every fan. And when I was at the free throw line, I felt like I heard everybody in the in the gym. So it is going to be you know. Playing on the road is not ever easy, but when you win, it feels a whole lot better. Right. How, 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 is it just kind of a toughness thing to, to block it out? I mean, when, uh, when teams make their runs and then. It, I'll able. say it's a tough, it's a mental toughness. Yeah. You know, uh, just playing through the crowd, you know, I feel like, I think, don't Creighton got one of the biggest, like, fan bases? Yeah. You know, like 17,000? Yep. So, you know, just blocking out that noise and staying to, you know, our game plan was big. Be difficult. You know, we um, our guys had a great mindset. You know, we, we didn't uh, play particularly well on offense, and Creighton had a lot to do with that in the second half. Their uh, their intensity level, um, it's just tough. You know, you go 0 for 10 from the three point line in the second half. Uh, you felt like you got some looks that were inside out that, that you you earned, and yet they don't go in. But you know, for us to be able to come in this building where Creighton hasn't lost all year, I know they're a little different team since Crumple went out, but we. Um, we hung in there and uh, we made the plays down the stretch and obviously both teams fouled at the very end. You know, I haven't seen it on replay, so I don't know, good call, bad call, but um, you know, for, for our point guard to be able to go to the free throw line and hit two free throws with .3 seconds left, I mean, should give him a boost of confidence like no other. Um, so, knew it would be a war. I mean, great, great respect for, for Creighton and how they play and Greg does an awesome job with his sets and uh, Marcus Foster is one of the best players in the league, so very fortunate and excited that we were able to get a win here. Was the last possession uh, with Goody taking it to the basket? Was that how you wanted it done? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, 4.6 seconds is an eternity of time, and we really tried to get that across to our guys that, like, we don't need to shoot any type of three-point shot, any type of half-court shot. That's a long time, especially if we can get it to Quentin on the run, which we did. Uh, we used Trayvon as a screener knowing that Trayvon's man, no matter where Trayvon's standing on the floor, is probably going to stand next to him and not help. And so that got Quentin going downhill. And I just told him, hey, get to the rim. Go right to the rim. If, if you feel like there's enough time and anybody sucks in, then you can kick it out. But we have to get something to the rim. And, you know, he lost his dribble a little bit, but was poised enough to sort of push it through the, um, uh, the two defenders. And then there was a car crash under the basket. And, um, you know, a lot of times you don't get that call. Uh, we were fortunate. I think it was a foul. Um, I'm going to have 17,000, you know, fans disagree with it. So I, I understand how that works. But uh, regardless, he had the um, – the guts to go to a uh, go to the free throw line and make two huge free throws and um, really happy for him. Where's where's he at? 355 days from maybe this point last year to like you said, yeah, have enough toughness to first of all go into there where there's two guys waiting for him, draw the foul, go to the line where everybody's trying to create as much noise as possible. Yeah, I mean you know Quentin's gotten so much better in the last year. He. Uh, He's physically one of the most gifted point guards in the league. I mean, he's six foot four. Uh, he's probably faster than everybody on both teams. He um, he's built like a tank. He's strong, smart kid, and he's just gaining a lot of experience. And I think you know when when you have positive results at times with that experience, man, it gives you a lot of confidence. And you know he didn't shoot it well in the non-conference. He saw a couple threes go down early in conference play, and so uh, he's shooting it better than anybody on our team during conference. His percentages, but. The thing I want out of Quentin and I'm really getting is, you know, he, he really runs our team. He makes a mistake here and there, but he's a sophomore. Uh, do what the game tells you. Create for your teammates. Defend like a point guard should, and uh, he's doing that. So to see moments like today when, when he goes to the free throw line and, you know, essentially, you know, wraps up the game, it's, it, it's special for him, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him. Coach, how big was it for you to have a game when JT and Trayvon didn't necessarily star in the game and your team still came through on the road? I don't know. I think our team, um, we certainly we rely on those guys, especially for leadership and points, rebounds, experience, you name it. Um, but they're team-centered guys. I mean, Trayvon doesn't start taking ill-advised shots. You know, JP took a couple hero shots at the end, and he can't do that. And, uh, and I told him as such. And, you know, he gets caught up in the moment at times, and um, he does it out of competitiveness and wanting to win. But, you know, I think as he sort of – watches that replay and figures out we could have probably got better shots, uh, he'll correct it. That's the thing I love about our guys, you know, not just those two, but, you know, our entire group is, you know, sacrificed in some way. Um, and uh, they, they coach themselves a lot of times in huddles, and that, I haven't had that a whole lot in my career. I don't think any coach does. Uh, and it's, it's, it's fun to watch. It's fun to be a part of. They really had to lean on Marcus Boxer in the second half. Just how difficult is it to defend him and then <laughs> – I mean, knowing that they have four other guys on the floor, you can't just. Yeah, you can't just leave. Um, you know, our game plan is to switch a lot of the ball screens that uh, that's set. And so that's going to put situations where our five man is guard Marcus Foster. And I, I thought outside of maybe one or two times, um, they kept him in front and contested a shot. And I don't know what else you can ask. I mean, if we start hard hedging or going under, we're going to expose ourselves to even more problems. So we felt like for us, that's the best answer. And, you know, at, at the last four-minute war, the last TV timeout before, um, you know, each of us started calling timeouts, I said, who, who do you guys think is going to have the ball in their hands? And everyone to a man said Foster. And I said, well, we have to make sure that he's not on an island with his defender because he, he rhythm dribbles and he rises up and he makes that shot. We, if we have to run somebody at him. So I thought we did that as best we could without just completely exposing other guys being wide open. But, you know, he's one of the best players in the league. He has been for the last two years and you know, killed us at Madison Square Garden. So um, he's a tough challenge no matter who's defending. Coach, I know you don't talk about rankings, but you know, there's a possibility that come Monday you have your highest ranking you've ever had at you know, Xavier. What does that say about your team this year? What does that say about your resiliency? Got a good team. You know, again, you're right. I, we don't worry about rankings. I mean, it's, um, it's great for recruiting. But uh, it doesn't help in, in the game against Seton Hall on Wednesday night. And uh, that's all we 
I told our guys, if, if, if our focus is about how well we played down the stretch against Butler, how well we played against Creighton down the stretch, if that's what our focus is on Monday and Tuesday, then um, I'm coaching a different team than I've coached the first four months of the year. Like, we, we have to look forward. We have three games at home, two on the road, and um, that's, what, that's what we have to be thinking about. Chris, what do you think is better preparation for March and tournament-style play, a comfortable win or kind of a slog like tonight and the last couple have been? I think March is a, is a totally different entity. I think, you know, certainly it's great that we have these experiences and it will help our team, I think. But, um, you know, ball bounces this way, bounces that way. Jeff Van Gundy once said, you know, when his guy shoots it at the end, the ball's in the air, he goes, good coach, bad coach, good coach, <laughs> bad coach. Ball goes in, hey, I'm a pretty good coach. So, you know, it, March Madness, that's why everybody loves it. it it's, it's just the bounce of a basketball at times. So, um, you know, I do think our team will be able to execute down the stretch and uh, has a togetherness that they, they won't want to end. But we'll talk about that in four weeks. Do you think, were you surprised that Karim and Sean were able to have the success that they had after they put – on tape what they did against Butler and you know everyone knows what they're capable of so to come out here and replicate it, it I mean it speaks to a lot it's pretty impressive yeah well, I'll say it wasn't e as easy as it looked I know the results are you know Karam ends up with 14 Sean ends up with 12 but uh, we were trying to pump the ball inside even more you know Hagner did an incredible job of fronting and uh, some of our catches were way further out than we wanted um, they doubled they doubled off our point guard. We, we got a turnover at the end, you know, on, on um, just the other side of the lane from our bench uh, with Karen when they doubled, the, you know, the post. So, um, you know, we, uh, we worked on that because we felt like they would watch our Butler game and say, hey, we're not going to play one-on-one -on -one in the post. We're going to bring a second defender. And, um, you know, we had a couple kickouts, missed a couple of those shots. And so, um, you know, but our, our fortunately our guys were pretty daggone good in traffic today, and that's, that's what you got to ask of them.